This is EDU C 4703U, Teaching and Learning, Problem-Based Learning. This is Session 3, Video Clip 2. The title of this video clip is Differentiating Learning from Teaching. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, according to the Conference Board of Canada, what kinds of skills are sought after by employers? Number two, Compare the given characteristics of present educational systems and learning-centered environments. Number three, compare content and process orientations as found in educational settings. Number four, what are the apparent differences between cooperation and collaboration? First slide takes a look at comparison of teaching and learning environments. And this is taken from work uh, Desjardins and Van Oostveen, 2008. I'm quoting from a paper given by Van Oostveen, Desjardins and Bullock in 2010. At the beginning of this new millennium, with the information and technological ages, education and more specifically teaching remains rooted in the practices of the past. Pedagogical practices continue to resist the lessons arising from educational research. In spite of profound, rapid changes in society, real re reforms have been slow to take hold in educational systems around the world. The ways in which we work, live, and play have all gone through important transformations in the past generation. Employers, governments, and institutions have all realized that the needs of society towards education systems have also changed. For example, the Conference Board of Canada, representing this nation's largest employers, published a short document entitled Employability Skills 2000 Plus, outlining the kinds of competencies that should be expected of graduates of our school system. This organization identified the, identifies the needed, one, academic skills, such as communication, thinking, and learning. Two, personal management skills that include a positive attitude toward change, and finally, three, teamwork skills. And again, that's taken from the Conference Board of Canada uh, in 2000 and again in 2006. From this, what is required of our future generation is clearly different from what was needed just a few years ago. This also suggests that commonly held views about teaching may no longer be relevant. Present educational systems and practices tend not to be coherent with modern learning theory as they tend to be, and here are the characteristics list, primarily instructor-driven, they are content-centered, and they tend to foster individual work. Whereas current learning theories suggest that learning is, or at least should be, learner-driven, should be process-centered, and should foster teamwork. When comparing instructor and learner-driven kinds of systems or environments, we find that instructor-driven environments tend to be uh, those in which the instructor is responsible for the delivery of information or content to the learner, and they're also responsible for modeling appropriate learning behaviors. There is also an emphasis on information organization and clarity of delivery. And finally, most educational choices are made by the instructor. As compared to the characteristics of learner-driven environments in which we find that students are responsible for their own learning, the emphasis on students understanding the material, um, content and processes, so it's both the content as well as the processes to be learned, and finally, many if not most educational choices are made by the students. When comparing content versus process orientations, we find that content focuses on and meets the requirements of the content, that is, the information that is believed to be of utmost importance within the specific field. There is also a focus on mastery, that is, memorization and application of the content, which becomes preeminent. And the course organization cannot be changed to meet the needs of either the instructor or the students because the content is of preeminent uh, importance. Compared to process orientations where learning is the, an active 
is active, resulting in engagement by the learner. It emphasizes students' ability or learner's ability to perform tasks by producing their own work with their knowledge and skills. And assessment in, in process orientations includes observation of and making judgments about the student's demonstration of a skill or competency in creating a product, constructing a response, or making a presentation. And finally, when taking a look at teamwork or team, team group work, uh, we can pick, compare cooperation and collaboration. This is, um, the following is taken from a quote of uh, Evans 2007, uh, wikis and open, open source, collaborative or cooperative. Um, why distinguish between collaboration and cooperation? Because the subtle difference between these words describe a lot about where we are versus where we need to be vis-a-vis -vis online communities. Admittedly, admittedly, Webster's defines the two words very similarly. However, I would argue that collaboration, unlike cooperation, requires the parties involved in a project jointly solve problems. Truly collaborative processes enable differing and possibly conflicting views to merge and create something new and previously unmanaged. Many online projects offered up as collaborative do not meet this standard. For example, some online projects, particularly open source software projects, break problems down into smaller pieces which are tackled by individuals. Subdividing a problem and allowing a network of volunteers to opt in and provide solutions is highly efficient. However, those involved in the project may never need to talk, exchange ideas, or even interact. Indeed, tricky problems may often end up relying on a single clever hacker operating alone to solve a problem. While this can be part of a cooperative effort, people with a common goal contributing labor to achieve it, it may not be collaborative. Equally, many wikis, which are assumed to require collaboration, simply replace old information with new information or rely on an arbiter to settle differences. This is at best cooperative, at worst co competitive, but again, probably not collaborative. From a theoretical perspective, I'd ask you to read the learning theory overview given by Smith, 1999, Learning Theory, the, the Encyclopedia of Informal Education, and the link will be given to you as well. Finally, the synthesis questions for this clip are as follows. Number one, do you think the skills reported in the conference board document can be developed in present educational systems? If so, how? Number two, why might putting the locus of control in the hands of the learner in learner-centered environments be important? Number three, why might a process orientation support an emphasis on learning rather than teaching? And number four, what difference does it make if learners collaborate rather than cooperate?